Well, good morning, Center for Spiritual Living. Welcome to a beautiful Sunday here in our new building. We're so, so excited to see all of you here with us today. This is just going to be a glorious day. We're now at about 77 degrees. We cannot help for better than that, I tell you. We are so excited to be back here with you and to be here on the premises of our new potentiality and possibility that is growing right here as we build this community together. So thank you all for being here. I want to welcome anybody that is returning to us from a while that I haven't seen in a while. I see a lot of faces out here that um, I haven't seen for a while, and I'm so glad to have you back here with us. And any of you that happen to be new here, I haven't met you yet, but if you are new, welcome to Center for Spiritual Living. We are so thrilled. We are an open, loving, inclusive community that sees the perfection of the divine in you right now, right now the way it is. So I'm going to start off this morning by um, inviting our practitioner of the day, Clay T. White, to come up and uh, open us with a little bit of contemplative time and an invocation. I was saying that I didn't know I was first. <laughs> oh, good. So let us go within. Let us just breathe in as we sit in this sacred space. This is what it must have been like for the Sermon on the Mount outside in the beauty, just breathe it in. God is the creator, spiritual, almighty, the spirit that is everywhere. Everywhere present, all knowing and all powerful. I am one with this eternal presence that is love intelligence, wholeness, and wisdom. As I know this for myself, I know it for each individualized expression here in this sacred space. Breathe it in. Please make this prayer your own. I speak my word for divine connections, ideal work, and holy play. Hours of fun and rewarding endeavors flow from my consciousness of the divine presence. Sacred light floods my being. I am equal to any task set before me. I am confident in my ability to meet every situation. I can solve every problem and overcome every difficulty. As I open myself to this message today, I am open to being transformed as I become silent and listen. My mind is open to new ideas, amazing contributions to my community and to my sacred work. I am so grateful as I release these truths into the law of the universe that law that allows my work to sing. And so it is. And so it is. Okay, so on your handouts, you should have the words to all these songs we're gonna sing today. We're gonna start with a Native American chant called Thank You For This Day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. For this day, thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This beautiful, this beautiful, this beautiful day. This beautiful, this beautiful, this beautiful day. Thank you for my friends, Spirit. Thank you for my friends. 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 Thank you for
for my friends, Spirit, thank you for my friends, my wonderful, wonderful, wonderful friends, my wonderful, wonderful, wonderful friends. Thank you for this life, Spirit, thank you for this life. Thank you for this life, Spirit, thank you for this life, my wonderful, wonderful, wonderful life. My wonderful, wonderful, wonderful life. Thank you for the space, Spirit. Thank you for the space. Thank you for the space, Spirit. Thank you for the space. This wonderful, wonderful, wonderful space. This wonderful, wonderful, wonderful space. This wonderful, wonderful, wonderful space. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful space. Ah, thank you, Justin, and thank you, Clee T, for starting us off so beautifully. And thank you, Kelly, for having the idea to put the words on a piece of paper for us all. So <laughs> sometimes if we forget about that. <laughs> ah, so this month, we are looking at the idea of work. And so we've spent some time talking about what is our good work, what is it we're here to do. And, um, and then we, last week we talked about creating a life that matters. And we've looked at a few books this uh, month that have um, helped us explore these ideas a little bit. And so we're going to look at a new one today, a book that I read back in 2017. The title for today's talk is Living Your Dream. Living Your Dream, finding that thing that is inside of you that's wanting to come out. And so back in 2017, I wrote, read this book by Stephen Cope called The Great Work of Your Life. And Stephen comes from a Hindu tradition. He's a yogic teacher. <laughs> there we go. He's a yoga teacher, and um, so he speaks a lot of what he calls dharma. Now, dharma in the Hindu tradition is your path. It's your life path. But Stephen takes it a little bit further. He says not only is it your life path, the thing that you are here to do, but it's also your sacred duty. And it comes from a place inside of you that is your soul's purpose, your soul's duty. And this soul, when you arrived in this body, in this incarnation, your soul knew what it was it was here to do. He calls it the soul knowledge. And then he takes it a little bit further. And he says, not only is it the soul's knowledge, but it is a mystic knowledge. Now, when we refer to the mystic, we think of things that are beyond description, things that are beyond our words, our thoughts, something that is ineffable, something that is not quite tangible, but you know it's there. And so he talks about this mystic knowledge that is inherent within each one of us, and that it is working through us. And he gives many examples of some of our great people of history and how they have allowed their dharma, their mystic knowledge, to come forth through them in the work that they do. Now, when we're speaking about work, it can possibly be the job, the job that you get paid to do, the job that supports you, the job that creates the livelihood that you have. But it can also transcend that. It can be more than just that thing I'm called. It can be more than that thing that brings home the paycheck each week. In fact, it often is. There's often a calling in there that is moving through. Or there may be a thread that is running through all of the things that you do that bring it into creating that dharma for you, that life path for you. So when I think back in my own life, I've had three jobs, if you will, in my, t my life for the most part. I've had a few other incidental ones that were you know, a couple of months at a time, but I've had three main jobs. The first job was when I was right out of high school, putting myself through college. I was an engraver. I engraved things on metals, you know, worked in a little shop where we sold keychains and things like that that we would engrave. I loved the job. It paid minimum wage, so it wasn't, it wasn't a really good job, but I loved the job because it allowed me to tap into something that I didn't know how much I needed at the time, and that was the creativity within me. It allowed me to um, be that creative expression in this unique way, in this way that was needed for people. But um, I did that. In fact, I did the job all the way through college, and even the first few years of teaching, 
um, I found out that when you graduate as a teacher, it's not very much more than minimum wage. So working a second job was necessary at the time. But anyway, it, it filled me. It filled me. It allowed me to, to, to um, have a place of creative expression in my life. And then, of course, my second career, many of you know, is teaching. I taught here in the Clark County School District for 30 years in different aspects of it. I loved it. I loved all different ways I did the teaching, whether I was teaching seven-year-olds or whether I was teaching adults. It was a, it was a joyous experience for me. And then my, this is my current career right now is in ministry. And so, again, it seems to be an evolution for me. It's an evolution of bringing all of these different things together the creativity that I found early on, the touching lives that I found as a teacher, and then finding a way to even touch people, touch lives in a greater way than I had before with my individual classroom. So for me, my dharma has been woven all the way through these jobs that I've had. It has moved in and out. And, it, and I know, for me, it is still unfolding. It is on a continuous path of unfoldment. I don't know what it's going to be later on. But it's not about hmm, staying with a job at a particular time or, or, you know, I retired from teaching. I could have retired and not done anything else again ever if I wanted to. But that wasn't my path. That wasn't my path in life. I knew that wasn't my path when I started teaching at 25, that I would still continue to find something else to do when I finished it because there was, there was just no way I was going to be done at 55 and and then think that was all there was to it. You know, in one of the books that we were, I was talking about first week, The Big Leap, Gay Hendricks talks about time, and he talks about it in two different ways. He talks about Newtonian time, which is that linear, sequential, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, finite time. And then he talks about what he calls <coughs> Einstein time. Now, Einstein time is fluid. Einstein time is what you experience when you've been working at something that feels like you've been doing it for 20 minutes and you look at the clock and it's four hours later. That's Einstein time. The Greeks have another way of expressing this. They call that linear time chronos. That's where we get the word chronometer from. Chronos is that linear. Again, 60 seconds, 60 minutes, 24 hours, seven days a week. That's that time. It's finite, it's limited, it's sequential, and there's no fluidity in it. But they have another concept that they call kairos. Kairos comes from the Greek god of opportunity. Kairos was a Greek god of opportunity. And uh, the term was used first in archery. Back in the Greek days, there was that moment that the archer has pulled back the bow and the bow, the arrow is ready to be released. And there's that instantaneous moment when all possibility exists. All potentiality is available right in that second. It's just, it's, I don't even know that you could quantify the time. It's just that instant. And then they let go of the bow. They let go of the arrow. And it does what it does. But before they let go of it, those seconds before it, all possibility existed in it. Every, every, every condition, every thing that could possibly happen existed right in that moment. That moment was full of opportunity. It was an opportunity to hit the target, miss the target, somewhere in between that. So this Kairos time that we work with, it's um, a moment for us to find that exceptional opportunity that's available all the time. When we can work in that idea that there is not this finite time, we, we, we can let go of the idea that says that I'm 62 years old and I should be retired and not doing anything every day. We can let that go because there, every single moment of my life is not dependent on anything else. Every single moment of my life is a new opportunity, a perfect now, a perfect time where all potentiality exists, where everything that is possible in my life exists within that, that instantaneous moment of... Um, possibility. And so our task then is to spend more time in our kairos than in our chronos. Because when we're in chronos time, we are filled with anxiety. Oh my goodness, what time is it? Where do I have to be? What do I have to do? And this is, I have 15 minutes to get this done. 
when we're working in that kind of a field of energy, there's a frenetic pace about it. There's a anxiety that we can't let go of. But when we're working in that Kairos time or that Einstein time, all potentiality exists in it. And that's, that's the place where we can begin to live our dreams, where we can begin to let the dreams live through us. And like I said, we often think that it's too late for me. It's often too late for me to, to, to tap into that, but I don't think that's ever possible. I don't think that, that we can ever have that moment where it's not going to be possible for us to live that dream that's been wanting to come through with us. And, you know, we get an, a set idea of what we think our dream should be, and then we try to make it happen. But sometimes we just need to allow it to happen spontaneously through us because it shifts and it morphs. I when, I when I was ready to retire from teaching, getting close to it about five years before I was ready to retire, I was beginning to anticipate different career options. And then, you know, spirit had his way. And <laughs> so I would have never thought when I was that 25, 30-year-old back as an early teacher that um, I would be in ministry. It would, you, I would have laughed at you. I literally would have laughed at you. There was no way that was going to be possible. Me, it was going to be oh something, well, I had all kinds of ideas, and they varied as they went. You know, a lot of it had to do with working on computers, which was that introverted part of me that really liked to do, you know, <laughs> stay away from people and, and work on uh, computers all day long was really a good thing for me for a while. But when we're finding our dream, there is a, a great deal of passion that is present in it. And this passion comes from the purpose that we have... Um, have felt this calling, this dharma, our soul's purpose, our mystic knowledge of what is in there that's wanting to come out through us. There's something all the time wanting to express through us. And so our opportunity all is always to take that passion and allow it to become our purpose. And then through, one more P, persistence, we can begin to live our dream. So a dream really has those three components, passion, purpose, and persistence to make those dreams happen. Because I don't know about you, have you ever had that thought, oh, I'd like to do this, and it just kind of goes in one ear and out the other ear and <laughs> moves on, and it wasn't ours to, to um, ha hang on to. It wasn't ours to um, bring into fruition. It was a good idea, but it, not, it might not be our idea, our perfect living dream. You know, I, I can't help but think how this relates to what we are doing here as Centers for Spiritual Living, right here on these grounds. We are beginning to live our dream. Now, this dream has been around for a long time. This dream has showed up in lots of different ways. I know as over the last, um, gosh, 17 years, I've worked on various committees where threads of this dream have been coming through. Having this dream of having a community that is greatly connected that reaches out into the community, to the greater Las Vegas area, to our whole valley here, and touches people's lives in a way that makes a difference. Through our principles and our practices, we can begin to touch lives. This current incarnation of this dream started about three years ago with our center here, when we entered into the period of the COVID crisis. And so, our community, our leaders, were faced with a difficult challenge. The funds were not coming in to support the center. The center was old. It was in much need of repair. It was in an area that was overrun with homeless people that were causing damage every night to the building. It became an untenable prob problem. And so our leadership, our blessed, blessed um, leadership council that we have, and all of the key ministers and members who have made this possible worked tirelessly. I know I've spoke to some of them during this time when I, w I wasn't here. I was in Denver at the time, but I was speaking to them and they were like, oh yeah, I've been working on this for 16 hours or, f or 14 hours. And these were 14 hour days every day for a long period of time to bring this, what we have now possible. And so because of their tireless efforts, we are now in a position of infinite possibility. As you look in the doors here, you see a blank canvas, a room filled with infinite potential, infinite possibility. And it's up to us 
to figure out what our sacred duty is in it. And then allow ourselves to live that, that dharma that we are called here to do as it relates to our community. To find a place in here that you're passionate about. To find a thing that we can do here at our community that gives you a great sense of purpose. And then above all else, be very persistent with it. We have a magnificent opportunity here. We are building a community. And we are building a community unlike anything that's ever been seen before here. I know this is completely possible. We have seen it come through in our visioning. We have felt it in our prayer work. It has come to us in meditation that the infinite potentiality that exists right here in each and every one of us is going to be manifesting itself in this room. Well, soon to be many rooms as we get through there. So I um, just want to give you a little bit of an update on where we're at with the progress of our building. We are still in that stage of waiting for permits. Um, they assure us that it's happening quicker than it usually does. And it's working on Kronos time right now. <laughs> it's a logical sequential time. And so our task is to add a little bit of Kairos to it. Let's see if we can bring in some of that infinite potentiality that exists in that moment that you let go of that arrow into our prayer work, our treatment work, our meditation, our contemplation. Anytime our center comes to your mind, you have an opportunity to find the infinite pot potentiality that is available right there. Tap into it. Say a word about it. Think a word about it. You don't even have to speak it out loud. Spirit knows. Just allow that sense and that feeling of what is possible here to come forth from you. And that is what, our, what we're needing here in our community right now. We have everything that we need is available through spirit. And everything that we need, everything that is, this community needs, everything that this valley needs is available as we enter into this phase of creating this next greater yet to be. And so our task is always to do our work, to do our spiritual work, to find those moments that we can tap into that infinite potentiality, that perfect now. And when we find ourselves feeling limited or constricted by time or anything else in our lives, it is an opportunity for us to again, once again, go in thin and say, okay, this doesn't have to be. I know that there's greater things available to me right here, right now. And so I'm just going to do a little bit of my spiritual practice and tap into that and see what is develop developing for us and through us. And so, as I said, always, we have this great, great opportunity here. And we want to know more about that for you. So as you came in, you um, received... You may have received a survey. If you haven't, some of you completed the survey the last time we were in person. We have a survey about small groups, interest, things that you um, help us build community in smaller groups because they become more personal. We feel more connected. And it's a way to invite others into our groups without the um, anxiety that involves coming to a big group of people. Some people prefer to connect in smaller groups. And so we are creating all of these wonderful groups. Justin started a group this last week, yes, on Tuesday. Um, we were so excited. 20 people signed up for it. We were so thrilled to see that. I mean, it was just a wonderful experience. He's, it's a book study on the work of Joel Goldsmith. He, right now they're doing the Altitude of Prayer. They will continue on. Wonderful thing about this group is you can drop in at any time. So if you're interested in it and you uh, couldn't make it the first one, um, go ahead and check in on our website. We have a link on there for you to sign up. If you, you have to sign up so that you'll get the link to the Zoom. That's how we stop Zoom bombers from coming on. So um, sign up for it, and you'll be sent the link to the uh, meeting. And the book is The Altitude of Prayer, and you're reading the first four chapters right now. This so. Week, yeah. so if you sign up and you drop in, make sure you've done the reading. Yeah. <laughs> and you have the book. <laughs> so you can discuss it with folks that are in there with you. Um, so that this one, Justin and I last or two weeks ago went to a restaurant, and while we were there, we thought, "Hey, this would be a cool place for us to get together." And so we created a Tuesday evening supper club. So on the first Tuesday of each month, we're going to go to a different restaurant. You'll pay for your own food. They're going to give us a space where we can sit together at tables, 
and um, chat and see get together. It'll be like um, what we used to have after service, except you go to a restaurant and they'll they'll wait on you there and and you get some wonderful food. So our first one is going to be on October 4th at the Hush Puppy on West Charleston, which happens to be one of the classic, iconic restaurants of Las Vegas. It's been around for about 50 years. Um, don't worry if you don't like fish. They have all kinds of things available there. So uh, please uh, consider joining us. Again, sign up, please, so that we know when we make the call to the restaurant that we know how many people to reserve the room for. And so each month, we're going to ask somebody in the group to choose a new restaurant so we can be eating all over town and experiencing restaurants we may not have gone to before. I kind of like that idea myself, so because um, I know the ones I like, which happens to be Hush Puppy. So <laughs> just saying, <laughs> if you start a group, you get to lead it. <laughs> um, and also today, Judy is having an organizational meeting for four more wonderful um, spirit groups. We have a women's group, a meditation group, a book, book study, and a game group. And so if you're interested in participating in those, and you'd like to see a little bit more about what that, that is, um, there's a little handout over here on the table, a little half sheet with directions to Judy's house, less than 10 minutes from here, um, and it's right after service at 10.30? Whenever. Whenever. Yeah, Judy's heading right over there, so head on over afterwards, and we'll do a little organizational meeting to see what that's about. It doesn't mean you have to do a lot of work, folks, just because it's an organizational meeting. Don't let that, that uh, um, in, uh, inhibit you from coming to... Make sure that you, um, if they're interested in any of those groups, um, and each month we're going to be adding in a few more spirit groups. So we've got our list, and Judy started with the ones that were most requested, and so we'll just go from there. Also, um, Kelly Marshall, our uh, media person, has set up um, a, web a website survey too. And so if you haven't had an opportunity to do that or you know somebody who wants to, have them go on and fill that out. And... Um, if there's any, or any groups that might not be listed on the paper, anything that you want us to know about, you can go into that survey. And again, that's listed on our website, csl.glv.org, and you can find out more about that. We have all kinds of things on there. I mean, from men's and women's groups to knitting and mandalas. <laughs> ping pong is not on the list. How about there? There we go. I think... You have to have a ping I know we have some ping pong players. I think we have some international ping pong players over here. Uh, Award winning ping pong players even. Buddy and Ray over here are, uh, was it the Senior Olympics ping pong? Is that what it was? Yes. I remember that. Ta oh, table tennis. Table tennis. I'm sorry. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, and so we also have... Um, an exciting workshop that's coming up in October. Next month, we're going to be talking about finances. This month was all about work. Next month's going to be all about finances. And so I'm currently reading a book. You know how it is whenever you start to think about something, everything that's not like it shows up in your life, and, or everything that, that is like it wants to bring itself forward. Anyway, I found this book called Money Magic, and it's really fun. It's a whole set of rituals around clearing some of those issues about money that we may not even be aware of, or just in installing some practices in our lives to help keep us in that flow of financial prosperity um, a little more easily. And so this workshop's going to be on the second Sunday of October at one o'clock. It's in the, uh, it's, we're gonna hold it at the Enterprise Library, which is on South Las Vegas Boulevard. Um, there is a sign-up sheet on the website. Again, our wonderful webmaster, Kelly, has got that all set up for us. Um, it's a free workshop. I am going to ask you to consider doing a spiritual practice around um, money and then consider tithing on that as part of the workshop. But the workshop itself is free. So if you would like to come and have fun and play around with some really cool spiritual practices, um, things like rituals and selling, setting up altars and um, cards and crystals and all that kind of fun stuff. We're going to see how we can actually implement it in our lives in a way that helps us get rid of some of the gunk that might be happening. So again, on October 9th at 1 o'clock, 1 to 4, at the Enterprise Library. Again, sign up for that so you'll get the information for it. And then starting in October, we are going to 2 in-person services per month. As long as the weather holds and we are 
able to do it right here. We're going to be doing it here in our um, beautiful parking lot. We are moving the time to 10 o'clock. For those of you that didn't like the 9 o'clock, and certainly for those that did not like the 8 o'clock that we did in June, uh, we're going to start at 10 o'clock in the morning because the weather is going to be able to accommodate that. So starting on the first and third Sundays of each month, at least through December, we have that already planned out. And speaking of December, we have a wonderful Christmas program that's going to be, or holiday program that's going to be done here in person on December 18th. So make sure you put that on your calendar so that you join us for that. Also want to remind you we have our fundraisers going. Our Labyrinth fundraiser is doing phenomenally well. We have about 35% of our funds raised already for the Labyrinth. And our uh, children's classroom fund is about at 20%. Both information for both of those are on the website. We just received some donations this morning for both of those fundraisers, so it's always exciting. Um, those of you that don't know, we're building a labyrinth in the floor of our sanctuary so that we can use that as a spiritual practice, too, in lots of different ways here. Ah, so I think that's all of the announcements that we have here. And so we're just going to take a moment now and um, do a little sharing of our conscious giving here. This is how we support the center and, and the good works that we're doing here at our, at our center. So if you would, um, take a moment and take your offering and hold it near your heart. And if you are, give it electronically, just put your hands on your heart, knowing that it's all done in consciousness. And give it a wonderful little blessing. And if you would, just repeat after me. This gift I give goes forth from me, does amazing and miraculous things, and returns to me in kind, pressed down and overflowing. And so it is. I am so blessed. I am so Judy, did I get everything covered for the sacred circles today? We're all good. If you need any, have any questions about the sacred circles, please see Judy. Judy, raise your hand and so everybody can see you. Those of you that don't know her, amazing. Her, between her and Reverend Charlotte, they are creating a wonderful program of small group ministries that will, again, let us connect with each other in small groups where we can make those deeper bonds, those deeper connections, and uh, see what we can create together in our small groups that I know will uh, then benefit our amazing center. And so again, if you have any questions or you need information, please, there's contact information on the back of your sheet you were given with the songs. Um, if you want to sign up for any of the things that we've talked about, please go to our website. We're doing everything through that. If you have trouble with that, contact us and let us know. And we will be able to help you get registered for that. All right, we're going to close with our community song. I don't know if you know this or not, but Justin wrote this song for you back in the uh, beginning of the pandemic. And it was so, right before the sale of the building. Wow. Yeah, finished so, it right before that. Your words are on there. If you'd like to stand up and sing with us, we would love that. Together we rise 
As the sun lights up the sky Opening our hearts To the spirit of love inside Together we rise God flows through you and I Together one in spirit We rise, we rise In times of struggle we seek the Spirit of God within. Receptive to our calling, we love our neighbors and our friends. Relaxing in the knowing, God grace it never ends. We gather as one people and with joyful hearts we sing. Together we rise. As the sun lights up the sky, opening our hearts to the spirit of love inside. Together we rise, God flows through you and I. Together, one in spirit, we rise, we rise. As we stay in gratitude, we let spirit lead the way. Listening to the still small voice, it's always there to say. Trust in God with all your heart, the path ahead is clear. We unite together and there's nothing for us to fear. Together we rise as the sun lights up the sky, opening our hearts. To the spirit of love inside, together we rise. God flows through you and I. Together, one in spirit, we rise, we rise. I see it. Together we rise as the sun lights up the sky, opening our hearts. Spirit of love inside, together we rise, God flows through you and I, together one in spirit, we rise, we rise. Well, my commitment is to get you out of here in less than an hour since we have no restrooms. So have a beautiful day. If you have a moment and, and have an opportunity, if you'd help us put some of the chairs away. These wonderful wicker chairs belong to Judy, and they go into the white van down there. And the white folding chairs belong to our center, and they go in the building here. If you were, if you were able to, great. If not, that's no worries, too. Give everybody a hug, a shake, greet your neighbor, and we'll see you all in two weeks. That's leading to some kind of drama or confrontation I go within and get plugged in to my friend before it's too late I put the spirit in front of me to make those crooked places straight I'm walking, I'm walking with the spirit And I'm talking, I'm talking to the spirit I love I'm learning the spirit And I'm turning, I'm turning to the spirit In one of those situations When I don't know what to do 
and got no explanation. I go in then and get plugged in for a revelation. And ten times out of nine, things will work out fine without my participation.